Hi everyone, Ollie here. Welcome back to the channel. This is just going to kick off a series of much shorter Q&A style of videos because I realised that although I was able to hopefully answer a lot of your questions when you pitch them to me about medical school, how it all works, actually applying for medical school, the problem is, is that those answers aren't very indexable, they're not very searchable for the people that want those answers. So what I'm going to try and do is provide a two to three minute summary answer for each and every question I get sent. If you have more, please post them in the comments here. But I'm going to address one at once. Each will get their own video and that'll help me make a few more videos while I'm doing my acute medicine block, which is turning out to be extremely busy. I don't have a lot of time to make and edit videos at the moment, but it means I can keep bringing content to you guys and hopefully answer the questions you need. So to kick things off, is there any such thing as too old to go to medical school? Thankfully, the answer to this is nice and simple because it's a pretty resounding no. At least in the UK, there is no real hard and fast rule of a maximum age limit of when you can apply for medicine. In my experience, when, when talking to doctors and medical students, there, there kind of exists three distinct camps of people, right? Maybe four. You have the people that apply to university when they're 17, they go when they're 18, and they come out when they're 23, 24, something like that. The sort of the people who go through at the earliest stage possible. You then have people like me who, for whatever reason, maybe don't get into university or they don't get into medical school the first time around when they wanted to. They'll then do a degree in something preferably allied to medicine, I guess, although it doesn't really matter. And then they'll progress immediately after that, or very shortly after that, to a medical degree, either on a graduate entry programme or an undergraduate programme, but without any real gap in their education. That kind of forms the second group. You then have a third group where they may do something allied to medicine, or they may do something completely different, and then work for a few years in the public or private sector, it might be in human resources or pharmaceuticals or something, and then they decide that they don't find it very fulfilling or they want to do more than they currently can in their current healthcare role. So after working for a few years, investigating their own pathways, they decide they want to retrain as a doctor and that will allow them to do the things they want to do. That kind of forms the third group. And then the last group, I would say is people further on who can be very established in a career or a job role that they were already in. By this time, they might be well married, they might have kids, they might you know, have property investments and things. They've basically got a life already established and they now want to bring medicine into their life. That's kind of the fourth main cohort. And what this obviously means is that you get people applying at a huge range of ages, which might be from when they're 17 through to their 30s, 40s, 50s, and this is the reality of medical school. And this is a really good thing because it allows service provision because we're able to bring people fresh out of college and their sixth forms, bring them into medicine, train them up as junior doctors so we can actually have a fully staffed rota. But then also through graduate entry programs and people retraining, it allows us to bring those skills and perspectives from outside that run through a medical program, people who have a wealth of life experience that would actually make them really good doctors who are then able to come in and apply those skills in a medical setting, and that's really valuable too. The one caveat to all of this is that I would say it's sensible to suggest that you are able to put in at least as many years back into the NHS as it takes to train you. You should hopefully be able to put in that many years as a doctor. That I think would be the sensible thing to suggest because on the average graduate entry program, let's say it takes four years to train you, that's the taxpayer paying for your education for four years. I would then consider it reasonable, and I think this is the stance that a lot of medical schools hold when they're thinking about applications, is that as long as you can put in as many functional years as a doctor, seeing patients, treating them, helping them get better, as long as you can put in that many years giving back to the people who paid for your education via their tax money and their national insurance contributions, that seems like a fair deal to me. So while as far as I know, there exists no hard and fast rule about what can be done, whether you can ever be too old to go to medical school, I think as long as you bear that in mind and make it a reasonable proposition logically, 
Because the reality is, right, if you think that you will make a good doctor, then you probably will. And some people just decide that they want to do it earlier or later than others, and that's fine. You know, ultimately the right time to do it is the time that you decide to apply. And loads of us will be here, including myself, including everyone in this wonderful community to support you. So no, essentially, regardless of your background, regardless of your age, really regardless of who you are or your past, no, I would say you're never too old to apply for medicine. Thanks for watching guys, there are three ways you can support the channel. The first one is to like, comment, subscribe, share this video with a friend, just enjoy it generally. Second, you can buy me a coffee if you found it useful using my Ko-Fi link which will help keep me awake during the editing process. And then thirdly, you can use my referral link to save 10% off your first year of Complete Anatomy 2020, my favourite 3D anatomy learning tool. Take care guys and I'll see you next time.